welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you for having me. I stumbled across your page about Adeno and your struggles with it and your journey, the ups, the downs, everything in between. And I thought she has such a genuine, authentic, truthful, compassionate voice that I wanted to highlight here because I believe you are already helping so many through your page and to come on here and maybe inspire some more people that, that don't know the work that you're doing. Thank so you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so tell me a bit about how you started to realize that you could have something wrong, that something wasn't right within your body. So I was quite young um, and I started having some quite bad stomach pains and reactions to certain foods, which obviously got pushed straight towards IBS, which I completely accepted at the time. Um, but there probably were some symptoms that I ignored because the IBS made sense for other, other things that I was seeing. Um, my main, the worsening symptoms that I got was actually I want to say two and a half, three years ago now. Um, and I basically, I had um, the marina coil fitted. Um, it was about nine months after I had that fitted. I suddenly um, started having periods again, which had completely stopped since the coil. Um, but it started and it just didn't stop for three months. And um, that was my first indicator because having not had a period for nine months I wasn't expecting to see just continuous and it was a very heavy <laughs> it was just a very bizarre um Sorry. experience so um I to be honest I ignored it because everything I found on google said there's you know you have to give it at least a year things might change between having it fitted in a year um but I at some point started to basically have some very severe cramps and pains that were causing me to be quite sick um like physically sick um and at that point I actually went to an out of hours doctor um after the first episode just because it was so severe and I'd never experienced anything like it um he straight away said it was an IBS episode and I must have eaten something to trigger it um yeah <laughs> um and Maybe um, a couple of weeks later, I had a similar episode uh, at about four o'clock in the morning and I ended up calling. So we have a line 111 for um, non-emergency, but wanting to speak to the hospital. Um, and they basically said that I needed to get a doctor's appointment as soon as it turned eight in the morning, uh, which I did. Um, and she basically felt around my appendix and said she thinks it's just period pain um of which my response was I'd, I'd had periods at that point for 10 11 years like I'd never had period pain like that and didn't see why it would start like that um and personally I then started to look into endometriosis um myself on Instagram and that's kind of where I thought I'm going to start pushing for some more answers because period pain and IBS just didn't cut it for me um it was just too it's too severe of a pain to put it down to something that seemed so simple. And also, I've never heard of IBS causing three months worth of bleeding. That to yeah. me is just poor, 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 poor practice for a physician to essentially just push you away because they don't have an answer. And instead of saying the correlation just... I'm not, I'm not a medical practitioner in any which way or any capacity. And as a civilian, I could say that scientifically medically does not make common sense. A hundred percent. Um, I mean, also she, um, the second doctor checked my appendix, which I hadn't even considered because of the bleeding it to me straight away seemed like a gynecological issue um but I just didn't know what and wanted help um at that point she did say that because I was quite uh, upset with her at that comment um she did put, put some 
sorry, she did refer me for some scans um, and said perhaps there was a cyst on my ovaries or something that was causing the pain or the bleeding. Um, however, when I actually went for that scan, I was chatting to the lady doing the scan and she said that usually uh, cysts don't actually cause bleeding. So straight away again, that kind of answered that question, although there was a cyst um, on my ovary at the time. So it was quite difficult because in the doctor's view, she was like, oh, there's there's the answer. Um, but still, for me, I wasn't 100 percent comfortable with that being the final outcome um, so continued to push until actually I eventually went um, through my private medical and um, paid for the treatment um, paid to go and see a specialist. And when you went to the specialist uh, were they a specialist in endometriosis? And yes yeah. um, as far as I know just endometriosis but she um, she has been amazing so I actually with the help of my mum <laughs> found her googled her and chose her as someone to go and see um because she had a personal like passion to look into endometriosis so I thought after what I'd found on Instagram and what I've been experiencing that made the most sense um straight away she said that it all sounded like it could be endometriosis and wanted to go down the route of looking into that um and I think it might have even been my first appointment she took me for an internal ultrasound um and that was when she she said that there was clear indication of adenomyosis and actually could show it to me on the screen. So it takes someone who has the, the knowledge, the experience and the ability to really listen to take the time and then give you the diagnosis. Once you got that diagnosis, did you have a feeling of vindication, a feeling of relief? What was your initial response? Um, in the moment in the room, I had a feeling of relief, definitely, because there was an answer. Um, but obviously, everyone goes home and starts Googling things. And there was just nothing online. Absolutely nothing. Nothing, no. nothing on Adeno. Nothing. It's yeah. like a few pages on Google. There's not much at exactly. all. Exactly. So endometriosis, there was some answers, but she'd said it's adenomyosis. And at the time, I had no idea what the relation was if there was a relation um so yeah I, I I went from feeling relieved that I had an answer to oh my gosh this is even worse than endometriosis because there's not even one page on google that I can find answers of what to do, what to do and then from there where did you go once you had the diagnosis in hand you stayed under this physician's treatment this specialist treatment because you seemed very pleased with her was yeah. there any treatment that she recommended for you other than the Mirena, the IUD? So yeah, so I already had that, which she did mention would would normally be something that they do suggest. Um, but clearly it it wasn't doing that job for me, which is fine because that wasn't actually the reason I had it fitted. Um, but she she also she was very good at explaining what options I had and obviously um, at the time, I think I was 23, 24, um, she obviously did uh, discuss hysterectomy, but let me know that that's kind of something that was kind of off the table for my, my age group. Um, but she did mention things like Zolodex, which is the induced menopause, um, which I actually have had, um, I did for six months. Um, I also did have a laparoscopy just to check there was no endo to be seen. Um, she was quite thorough. Um, it gave me lots of options that I could try, but lots of them I did turn down, things like the pill, because I'd come off the pill and had the coil for mental health reasons. Um, so I didn't really want to try that um, for the pain. Yeah. And, and when you go back to saying about there's not much online, there's not a lot of information, there's also not many treatment options. Like you just said, hysterectomy, they know will be the cure, but that's also so final. And exactly. if you're at that stage of your life where you want to give that up and um, and take off having children or carrying children off the table, that is not even an option. So then you go back to hormonal suppression, things that induce menopause. All of these are yucky, yucky, yucky solutions, right? There's <laughs> things like here's here's the bad, which is adeno and the pain and suffering that comes with, and then here's more bad, which is the sort of kind of might be a solution. It's not really foolproof, so we don't know. There's there's much work to be done about 
I don't know. So for you, when did you say, you know what, I'm, I'm frustrated by the lack of information and resources and support, and I'm going to become that place that people can go to. When were you like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do this. Um, so I actually put a post on my personal Instagram when I got my, uh, after my laparoscopy actually, so not my original kind of diagnosis, um, but the laparoscopy, um, just because I had told a few friends and colleagues that I was having the surgery. And so I thought if I put an update on, then I don't have to talk about it to everyone individually. Um, and I had a lot of girls message me from people from school, uh, people that just followed me and a lot of people were saying that they had endometriosis, which obviously I knew there was a difference, but it just showed that it was just bunched together as, oh, that sounds like endometriosis. And, um, and I, as I said, I had been looking on, on Instagram myself about endometriosis, but I hadn't seen anything about adeno. I'd searched it for hashtags and things and hadn't found much at all. Um, so the reason that I decided to really was because I didn't feel comfortable posting it all on my personal page because I didn't want to sort of force it down people's throats but at the same time I really wanted to have a place that I could kind of talk about my experience and some of the people that I followed with endometriosis were finding um, brands that had uh, like supplements that might help or things like that and I thought what a perfect place to kind of put all my trials on what I've done what's helped what hasn't helped or even just chatting to other people that understand because it was something that nobody I, I didn't know anyone that could even begin to imagine the pain that I was describing or understand it um I live with my partner and and it was quite a hard situation because I would be absolutely fine one minute and then curled up in a ball like screaming in pain and it's quite hard to actually explain that to someone that really has no understanding at all yeah yeah it's, um, it's very difficult how to have how did you navigate that with your partner to try to, um, I mean that's that's challenging and that's something that also is not spoken up a lot is how when you have endo adeno it's chronic, it's debilitating. You really can't schedule your life around it. You could have the mm -hmm. biggest day of your life planned and it will just come in there like a force field and be like, nah, -uh. <laughs> you know, you're gonna mess up. Exactly. Um, and then people don't know why you can't push through it and what's going on and- A hundred percent. I think uh, it's really hard. So we had just basically just got together um, when my symptoms started to worsen. So I went through the whole process of diagnosis with him. Um, he knew every step of the way what was going on. So that kind of helped in the, in the sense that we were understanding it at, at the same pace. Um, but I still find that there's days, I mean, we've been together three years, there's still days where I can see the, the frustration of, sorry I can't do anything and he's like ah because um he's got two children that we have half the time and if it's a day that we've got the children and I am trying my best but I am exhausted or in pain and just need to lay down it's it's really hard to explain that to everyone in a way that's I'm not just being lazy I'm not just going to bed because I fancy a nap like I physically can't do this um but he he is amazing and he is really supportive so it's it swings and roundabouts I, I can't I can't imagine how hard it is for someone to understand when they would never have a reason to experience pain like it oh yes there's definitely a, a learning curve especially for someone who is living with you loving you trying to be supportive and just it's it's not anyone's fault it just takes time and you also have to choose someone that has the ability to want to learn with you and have patience and empathy and compassion. And if there's a partner out there that lacks it, it's not a good fit. So, so it's great that you have someone who, who is doing those things and who is malleable to, to learning more about a very little known disease. What's your advice for those that are watching this, who think they might have adeno, who just had a confirmed diagnosis, who have been long suffering with the disease, what's your advice to them? 
Um, I think that's different stages for each of those um, stages in the diagnosis process. I think before diagnosis, I keep pushing like, you know your body better than anyone. And if you truly believe something's not right, then, then it's not. And um, I, I dread to think how many more years I would have gone if I hadn't have forced basically someone to see me and listen to me, which is what I did by going privately. Um, but um, in, for people that suffer with it, to be honest, I, I think it's just a case of trying as many things as you feel comfortable with. I have tried a lot of hormonal um, treatments, which I haven't found have been magic. Even Zolodex, which I was told would have the exact same um, uh, effect as a hysterectomy on my body and I would feel as I would if I'd had a hysterectomy. It, it didn't cure the pain. I was still in pain, maybe a few days less a month, but it was still there. Um, so I think just try as many things as you can. And for me, the online community on Instagram is literally the thing that gets me through because you can talk to people, you can get advice from people that genuinely know. And I have found so many different um, things like CBD and things like that, that I just never would have even known to look into without that community so I think just having someone to talk to um, is a huge huge important step yeah reach out to the village that is there because that's where I found so much support and also just people that are willing to especially when you're tired of fighting and you feel like you've been at battle for a long time and you're getting told by doctors even if you're you know three four five years into your diagnosis it's just one of those diseases that pops up with new things sometimes <laughs> and yeah. you might not have the understanding and to be able to talk to someone who's been through it and say, no, 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 you need to advocate. You need to keep going and finding the right doctor and have someone who's going to listen to you. So that is definitely the benefit of the community that, that is there. Um, for someone who might feel as though the person who has had it for a long time and just feels like they are depleted what is your recommendations for them to get through their days? I mean, to be honest, that is something that it can be such a struggle. I, I, I know that people hate being told that mindset helps because I know mindset isn't going to cure the disease. But personally, I, I think that is so important. Um, I've recently started listening to um, podcasts about law of attraction and things like that. And I, as much as I don't think that we have brought the disease upon ourselves or can cure it with the law of attraction, I think that that positive outlook on life really hugely helps and that you've got through the bad days, you'll get through them again. Um, and, and there is an end, especially with adenomyosis, there, there are final options that can be taken if you are taken to that stage yeah and and it's um it's very hard because we live in the world of like toxic positivity now too where you can be too positive too negative yeah. you know sugarcoat things it is totally okay like you said to to feel it to live it to know that this sucks essentially but to also realize that you are strong enough powerful enough to overcome these terrible bad days. Exactly. Um, and that's a great message. And I appreciate you for everything you've done and, and who you are. And it takes a lot of courage and tenacity to share the most vulnerable parts of your life, especially when it comes to your health. So thank you, Charlotte, again. I look forward to hearing more from you and hopefully having you back again soon. That would be lovely. Thank you for having me.